Hello, everybody. My name is Eileen McCusick, and I'm the founder of the Sound Therapy Method Biofield Tuning that uses tuning forks to help people relax and de-stress and improve their vitality, reach their potential. I'm the author of two books, Tuning the Human Biofield and Electric Body, Electric Health. And I'm here today with my good friend, Geraldine Glass, who's just joined the ranks of published author with her new book, and we're so excited about it, Sacred Vibrations. And Geraldine, I would love you to tell us uh, what readers can expect by reading your beautiful new book. Oh, thanks, Eileen. And it's so fun to be together with you. Gosh, and you are also a part of the book. Um, so I tell a little story about how we met and how your work with the Tuning Forks helped me in such a critical time in my life after the loss of my son. So sound and music as medicine is really what I want and what I want to share with people. And that's what the book is about. It's about um, how sound and how intentional music can really be our medicine, our, our balm right now. And people are experiencing so many things that can't be solved with a pill, right? And can't, they, they need to be worked at with what sound can create for each of us, which is a, a sacred space, a sacred container, and help us to go in and breathe and feel things that are, you know, they're tough. So in the book, there's structure and story about the crystal singing bowls, how they are why they're effective and how I use them and what's the structure of how I use them. There's uh, things called uh, sound RXs. And so we put these um, little sound RXs in the book that have stories about how I've worked with cancer patients, hospice patients, veterans, children, and the many practitioners that I've trained around the world, their stories. And then threaded throughout our our sound wisdom from colleagues like you and Jonathan Goldman and Joshua Leeds and Dr. Sue Martyr, um, Dr. Daniel Levitin. So there's the science and structure and how all these different modalities of sound are helping people. And then there's the miracles of this guy who, who passed away um, nine years ago and started a wondrous relationship with me through sound vibration and communicating through sound and light and signs and that's threaded throughout the book so well that's yeah. that is exciting and it's also right i know it's been a labor of love for you you've been working so hard on this and at the same time you've also been working on an app uh, and, and a card deck. I've actually been in awe of your productivity over the last few years, and you've really given us so many wonderful gifts of sound. Uh, so thank you, Gerilyn, for all of your hard work. <laughs> I know I know firsthand that it's not easy uh, to put all this kind of stuff together, and I know that you do it out of your love and care for humanity, and also the fact that sound has helped you so much in dealing with the grief, helping you to digest and integrate the grief of the loss of your son. I know, Eileen, it's, um, you know, when it first happened nine years ago and three different doctors says, Let, let's put you on an antidepressant, it was like, <laughs> that's not gonna solve the problem. This problem is I'd like him back and no medicine is gonna bring him back. So how do you deal with that, you know? And um, I don't know, since I've had a life in music, I started as a professional at 19. Music was that language that I knew. And I, I knew that music could transport us. I knew that music could ground us. I knew that music could uplift us. Um, and there it was. So I feel like I'm a, a living, walking example of how does sound affect us such at, at the cellular level that because I, I thought, and you knew that when I came to see you, um, I just thought I'd never be able to get out of my bed again, uh, nonetheless, to live any sort of life that was had, had joy in it. Yeah, yeah. And when your heart is that heavy, I know for me, when I lost my mom, which was one of the most difficult things that I'd been through at that point, I was just 25 years old. 
and my heart was so heavy. I felt like it was just going to pull me face down onto the floor and I just wasn't going to be able to get up again. And what really picked me up off the ground was music and uh, singing at the top of my lungs. I had a few CDs that I played over and over again, and it was the movement of sound through my body that gave me the energy to get up and do the things that I had to do. And I, I think one of the beautiful things about uh, singing bowls and tuning forks it is the simplicity of them and how, you know, we all know that music moves us, uh, but there's something about, about the single tones, the simple tones of uh, your tools and mine that I think really get in there and, and, and just get us to feel, you know, to just really feel and be with and digest those difficult emotions in a way that taking a pill will never let you do, right? Because I found, and I know you have as well, that you really have to feel it to heal it. And so our work isn't necessarily about like taking it away from you, but rather helping you to actually like feel it all the way through, um, which isn't comfortable to go through, but then you get to that spaciousness on the other side uh, that makes that journey so worth it. You know, I remember laying on your table and I had not had any real experience with tuning forks at that point in time. Um, and you came highly recommended and it was like, yes, it was a big yes. And I just remember experiencing a safety and then experiencing like being able to go in, like you were holding space with me. The sound was holding space with me and it was very pointed and focused. And I remember feeling being able to go in and touch the grief and cry with you and feel it. And you witnessed it and held me there. And then I remember feeling you tuned me, you know, which now I've come to understand, like we each are our own human instrument and we get out of harmony. And how do we tune ourselves? You were helping me to create space to just breathe and feel the immensity of the grief. And I remember walking out of your, your studio space and just feeling hopeful, feeling like I had taken a that I had up leveled in some way. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but just felt okay, Gerald. And this is one step towards healing, you know, and I'm not sure one even thinks of that word because so many people say to you, well, you'll never get over it, you know? And it's like, no, it's not about that. It's not that you'll never get over it, but it's how do you anchor in yourself this deep kind of love and respect for the bigger picture of our lives that you can handle it, that you can accept it and that you can walk again, you know, like with your mom, that you can walk again and feel her, that I can feel Dylan and communicate with him and feel we still are connected. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's one of the things I love about sound too, uh, especially with the tools that we play with is that I really find that, you know, a tuning fork has all these overtones and undertones as does bowls. And these really open up the subtle realms of perception. And there is such a shamanic mystical element in this work that I think deepens our connection to the, the subtle realms and makes uh, the messages that we get from there more clear, uh, more, more uh, real to us. That, that that shamanic element. I mean, the, the other thing I love is that there's also a very clinical aspect to the work I do with sound. And if people are, you know, their knee hurts, <laughs> you know, sort that out. Um, but the the way that it opens up these additional dimensions of our being, like that alone, I think is so healing. Yeah, most definitely. And I like that you use the word shamanic. That is very, um, it's medicine, right? Shamanic is medicine and that is i think especially what you were saying like the bulls have one particular note or tone but they also have undertones and overtones and it it helps us really to quiet the mind and then suddenly you're open to um the invisible becoming visible becoming felt to unlimited possibilities 
Yeah. Unlimited possibilities. I love that. Well, why don't we give people um, an opportunity to um, hear your bowls and hear my fork. So we both have, I have a 528 fork and you have some 528 bowls. And then we can each talk about, you know, what, what's the difference? I think people who are going into sound healing might be like, do I get bowls? Do I get forks? You know, we're going to tell you, get both <laughs> and use them together. Um, yeah, so there's, really there's actually a story in the book of um, uh, one of the women that has trained in biofield tuning with you and also trained with me. And it's, it's very, very interesting. Do you want to go first? Um, sure, I'll go first. So uh, I don't, I don't have my great mic with me. So I apologize. That the sound quality isn't like gonna be perfect here. But with any kind of sound healing over the internet, it's really also about catching the vibe, catching the feeling of it, not getting too caught up in like how it sounds through my my, my microphone and your speakers, um, but the feeling of it. And what what I really love and what Geraldine said earlier is about that ability to really bringing us to one pointed focus to just drop into the now to our own somatic experience in our body and just feel where the sound wants to take us right sound moves us music moves us so turning off the thinking mind and just being curious about what it is you feel when we uh when we play with these instruments all right so again i've got the 528 hertz fork these are ones that um that i make i make my own forks very high quality ones and uh and this is one that's just great for for meditation or for presencing so i just want to invite everybody to take a moment close your eyes take some breaths down into the belly and exhale down your legs and out your feet just really get a sense of being connected to ground and in this present moment. Just notice if there's any place your breath wants to deepen into or expand through. All right, and now I want everyone to really um, take a big breath all the way down into the pelvic floor. Really expand that breath out in every direction. And even once you feel like you've filled up, take a few more sips and just hold it for a moment. And then exhale out all the way, exhaling out every drop and just allowing air to come back in naturally. And then I just want you to visualize um, light behind your eyes. See if you can get a sense of light filling up behind the eyes. Relax the jaw, soften the tongue, and allow the sound to really come into areas that are tight, into the ears, down the neck, and into the inside of the shoulders, the base of the neck, and just allow the sound and breath and awareness to just brighten the eyes, relax the jaw, soften the shoulders. Good. Okay, I'm going to do one more and I want to invite you just to take another nice, deep, free, easy breath. And maybe make a little sound on the exhale. <sighs> Good. And then just check in and see what you notice about how you feel from that. Geraldine, what did you notice? Ooh. Centeredness. First yeah. I felt the sound here, then in my heart, then in my belly, then in my pelvis. And when you said to feel a light behind the eyes, something shifted and the whole 
I just whoosh, quickened, just quickened. Nice. And that was just a few minutes, right? And it just kind of helped you to drop in a center, feel your body, right? Just be a little slower, maybe, as we come into, into now, right? So there's, there's such an easy tool uh, to just sit, even just sit with and, and quiet. I think we have so much busyness and noise that any tool that we can adopt that's simple and easy to use to quiet us and still us is so useful. So I know I find that there's so much that triggers us now, right now, you know, and I just putting into practice myself every day, just, okay, finding that place where you quicken, whether I'm at home and with bowls or whether I'm out and about and I just, mm, or even if I imagine the sound of a bowl or the sound of a fork and can feel that vibration within me, it immediately brings that centering. Um, <laughs> it's, it couldn't be simpler. And, uh, and yet many people are not, they're not utilizing these really simple tools. So, well, I would love to hear some bowls. Yes, ma'am. So let's hear some 528. So we'll hear the same tuning. Okay. And I'm going to play, um, a couple of different notes, but they'll, they'll all be tuned to 528. Let's see how you feel. Nice, Sherilyn. That was wonderful. I love your bowls so much, the way that you play them. So, so I've had the good fortune of attending a number of Gerilyn sound baths, and they're far and away the best, I think. Um, yeah, so I really I really felt that very much in my body, um, just that kind of instant. I, what I love about sound is the way that it captures your attention, right? All of a sudden, I'm just like hearing it and feeling it and resonating with it and being curious about the overtones and the way that the sounds are interacting. Um, it felt almost like 
um, you know, being in a, in a, in a holy space and, uh, and, and just being present with that, you know, that holiness, that, that quiet, that, um, divine presence and light. And, you know, that, that to me is the medicine. And it's not just that music is the medicine or that sound isn't the medicine. It's that sound has the power to bring us to that place. And that's the place where healing happens. When we're, when we are not in a million different pieces and scattered and stressed and this and that, I mean, it's very hard for your body to fix things when you're all like, ah, <laughs> but when you're quiet and spacious inside, your body does all the things that it needs to do to take care of itself, to repair itself and why sound healing. So many people are discovering sound healing, right? You and I have been doing this for a long time. I've been playing with forks for 28 years, uh, just kind of waiting for everyone to catch up and like see how cool it really is and how useful. Um, and I think people are very lucky to have you because I, I think too, what we're seeing in the sound healing world is a lot of cheap courses and cheap tools um, cropping up. And I think that, you know, if people are interested in sound healing, you really get what you pay for in this world. You really do. Um, and, and Geraldine, you offer such high quality, comprehensive training. You work with such beautiful, high quality bowls. And, uh, you know, my work is certainly backed by peer reviewed science and, and all kinds of other supporting systems. My tools are, I'm so meticulous about them. Um, so I just really want to encourage anybody who's thinking about sound healing, like go for the best. Geraldine is totally one of the very best uh, teachers out there because she's a professional musician. You know, you, you're a professor, right? You're of a PhD in music. I mean, Eileen, what you said, thank you for that. What you said is holiness and sacred. And that's hence the title of my book, Sacred Vibrations, because there is something divine there is something godly there is something however you want to name it it's that presence that's beyond this physical body that for me music comes down to it's the vibrational presence of love and as you just said like my singing teacher used to say to me don't listen to yourself nothing vibrates here you know and i didn't get what she was saying as a young singer it was like well what do you mean and you know then she'd say take the question mark off your back it was like I, I didn't quite get it. Now, of course, I understand, yes, if you're listening to yourself, you're shifting how your vibration gets amplified, right? But if we're in the body and living in there and feeling, that's what you just said. That's where healing happens. It doesn't happen in here. It happens when we allow vibration, when we allow feeling to move, and then things can shift and transform, and yes, they can heal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the things that I've been saying lately is that I've really come to the conclusion that most of what ails us, if not just about everything, uh, anything you can think of, whether it's pain or depression or anxiety or, or any number of things with labels, that almost all of these things are tension based. They're tension based. They're patterns of tension in the body that is stopping things from firing properly and, and circulating properly. And I've come to the conclusion that anything that helps us to truly and deeply relax, especially to relax subconscious tension is going to help our body to fix itself. And I will tell you that lying in a in one of Geraldine's sound baths is extraordinarily relaxing because there is no up here. There's just so much sensation and feeling and movement. And, and you don't have to think about it. That's a beautiful thing. You just have to sink down into the essence of who you are and, and allow yourself to be authentically you. And, uh, and that's another thing I love about you, Geraldine, is that you are so authentically you and, uh, and you bring so much of your heart and soul into this, into everything that you do. I can't wait to check out your app. Um, I've read most of your book, but I haven't finished it. So I can't wait to finish that. And, um, I'm so excited to let, you know, both your people and my people know that this, this is now available as a wonderful new resource of uh, information and understanding in the realm of sound healing. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful. And you know, Eileen, I think coming to understand that there, there is a bigger picture of our lives 
So what you just described, when we use sound and we connect to the divine or we connect to the cosmos or universal intelligence, however you want to name it, what I came to understand is that my son's passing was not in vain. My son's passing was a contract, a soul contract that we had. And it's not that he's gone forever. He's just in a different form. And it helped me to understand that there is a bigger picture to our lives that we're not victims, you know, because so often you can fall into this place of poor me and, and why me? And I'm a victim, but no, if we allow every occurrence in our lives to be something that empowers us, that strengthens us, that opens us, that, as you were saying, that develops us to land in our authenticity. Wow. You know, wow. It just, it changes everything. And then sound and music to accompany us on that journey helps it to ground and helps us to really embody it so that, you know, we can walk around with joy in what we're doing, you know, Absolutely. So, Geraldine, your book, um, probably like on Amazon, all the things, is there an audio version too? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah, there is an audio version. And I just heard from Hay House that it's actually going to be on Spotify. And it's fun because we, I chose bowl, bowl introductions. They're like 25, 30 seconds to each chapter. So for example, um, in the chapter that's called Elevation, then I used particular bowls that supported that theme to the chapter grounding had of course deeper bowls so they you you will get that on the audio version and it was just fun to speak it like as you were saying to allow the authenticity of my own vibrational signature to come through as i shared what i wrote so yeah that is available and then in the back of the book there's um there's a qr code which we what kind of what we did with the the card deck um let's see if i can find it um, where you can, you go to that and you go to a landing page that has a beautiful 20 minute film where you can see all the different pictures and color and, and see video and stuff that I'm very proud of what we put together. And then there's some, uh, meditations that you can download. So the book is meant to be also interactive, but the audio book of course is, is speaking. So it's nice. I love that. Oh, I'm definitely going to go scan that QR code. <laughs> what a, what a yeah. Fun idea. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, Geraldine, thanks so much for hanging out and, uh, and chatting about all this and congratulations. I really appreciate all the hard work that you've put into this and I know everyone else will too. So thank you. Thanks Eileen also for all you're doing in the world. And I just, I just love you. I love your presence in my life and thank you for allowing me to include you in the book and, um, Onward and upward we go with sound. Yes, so, onward and you. upward. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.